Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Cholamandalam Investment and Finance Company Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Kotak Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mahesh from Kotex Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hey, uh, thank you, Renju, and good morning to all who have joined into the call today. We welcome you all to the earnings conference call of Cholamandalam Investment and Finance Company Limited. Your usual moderator, Nishin, has had to step out today and I shall handle today's session. To discuss the first quarter's performance of Chola and share industry uh, and business updates, we have the senior management represented uh, by, with us today. Uh, we have Mr. Velayan Subaya, the chairman and non-executive director, Mr. Ravindra Kundu, who is the executive director, Mr. Arul Selvan, the president and CFO. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Velayan for his opening comments, after which we shall take the Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Mahesh, and good morning, everybody. Uh, so just quickly jumping into quarter results. Disbursements for the quarter were at 13,329 crores, which is up, uh, obviously, by 267% just because of the base effect uh, from the last year. Total AUM is at 86,703 crores, up by 14%. Uh, NIM net in income margin is up at 1640 crores, which is up 19% year on year. And the PAT is at 566 crores, which is up 73% year on year. <clears throat> Overall, consumer confidence continues to improve uh, with the Indian economy growing at 14 to 15%, in spite of higher than expected inflation and tightening of monetary policy. And uh, Chola de delivered its best ever first quarter dispersals, collections, and profitability, with domestic auto sales zooming by 55% in the current quarter, albeit in a low base, and sustained growth momentum in residential unit sales as well. Uh, you know, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, like we said, kind of disbursements are at 13,329 crores. Um, and uh, you know, Q1 FY22 was impacted by COVID, by COVID which is why uh, it was lower in that quarter. But getting into the individual businesses, vehicle finance disbursements were at 8,562 crores, as against 2,846 crores, which is a growth of 201%. Uh, loan against property, including affordable, LAP, um, dispersed 2,169 crores, as against 386 crores, which is a growth of 462%. Um, the uh, home loan business basically dispersed 478 crores as against 199, which is a growth of 140%. Uh, SME dispersed 1,030 crores as against 204. And our new businesses, which are consumer and small enterprise and secure business and personal loans, registered disbursements of 1,055 and 36 crores respectively in Q1 FY23. AUM stood at 86,703 crores as compared to 75,752 crores. In fact, like I mentioned, was at 566 compared to 327. The PBT ROA was at 3.7% as against 2.5% in the same period last year. And ROE was at 18.9% as against 13.5%. The company continues to hold a strong liquidity position with 5,113 crores as cash balance as of the end of June 2022, including 1,500 crores and 200 crores invested in GSEC and P-bills, which are shown on their investments, and a total liquidity position of 11,324 crores, which includes undrawn sanction lines. Uh, the ALM is comfortable with no negative cumulative mismatches across all time buckets. Consolidated PAT for the quarter was at 562 as against 329, which is a growth of 71%. In terms of asset quality, uh, the, uh, at the end of June 2022, um, stage three assets stood at 4.16% with a provision coverage of 40.69% as against a comparable 4.37% at the end of March 2022, 
with a provision coverage of 39.67%. Total provisions currently carried against the overall book is 2.92% as against the normal provision levels of 1.75% uh, carried prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Management overlay uh, is now at 528 crores in terms of provisions carried on the books. As for the revised uh, RBI norm, the uh, November, November 12th uh, circular of last year, the GNPA and NNPA percentages stood at, at the end of June 2022 stood at 6.31 and 4.35% respectively. We carry 736 crores higher provisions under India Air over IRAC. As per prevailing IRAC norms, the GNPA will be similar to the stage three numbers given above. The details of stage-wise assets are, are available as part of the overall release. Uh, the capital adequacy ratio for the company was at 19.15 as against the regulatory requirement of 15, and tier one capital was at 16.3 as against the normal 10%. Uh, so now I'll stop with that. We'll be happy to take uh, questions from our time. Sure, sir. We can open the floor for questions now. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Shripal Doshi from Aquarius. Please go ahead, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, good morning, and thank you for giving me the opportunity, and congratulations on good set of numbers. So, firstly, I want to know what is the outstanding restructured book loan? Any restructured book loan? Yeah. The <coughs> outstanding book stands at around 3,500 crores, a restructured book, uh, which was at around 5,800 crores uh, earlier. And we did initially, it is down 3,400. So you will not audible, I'm sorry. Uh, it, yeah. The outstanding book is at 3,400 crores now, as against the 5,800 crores when we initially did the numbers. Right. Got it. And so, uh, just the second question on the same line. So what would be the right of that we, we would have taken from the restructured pool during this quarter? The, the the restructured book, uh, as, as shown, uh, no no stress is different from the normal pool. It is it is a, it is progressing in the same way. As you know that <clears throat> we have discussed this earlier also. The moratorium given in the restructured books are very small, uh, ranging predominantly to one month to three months at most. So the all these all these assets have started being tracked as part of their, our normal book itself, and so the stage three numbers which are already there uh, corresponds with whatever is the in the in the restructured book also. Okay, okay. So we've been guided for a less than four percent net NPA number for the for the year end. Uh, so keeping that in mind, what will be the credit cost that 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 we will be building for the year? The credit cost, which is currently we are seeing at around 1.2%, will be the levels. So, as I have told uh, even in today's morning call, uh, we will range anywhere between 1 to 1.5% over the cycle, uh, and we should be uh, we should be at the pre-pandemic levels now. Okay, got it. So thank you so much, and good luck for the next quarter. Thank you. Next question is on the line of Abhijit Tibrewal from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning and thank you for taking my questions. Uh, my first question is to Ravi, sir. Uh, sir, I mean, if I kind of look at uh, the texture of the vehicle finance disbursement, so basically I'm looking at the different sub-segments. So pre-owned vehicles, exchange and construction equipment are the three segments. Uh, there is a, seen a, uh, in a sequential decline. Again, I understand there is that seasonality expect and not really fair to compare Q4 to Q1. But I mean, having said that, I just wanted to understand that these three products, that is used vehicles, SUVs, 
and construction equipment are they seeing i mean a lot of aggression from banks and some of the other listed nbfcs and and how how to be kind of uh, read this uh, that's my first question to you sir and the second question is i mean how is the demand in tractors uh, right now there are a few other uh, your peer uh, nbfcs have suggested that the demand in tractors is very very strong uh, while i mean when we talk to some of the auto guys they don't kind of suggest the same thing So if you can just kind of give some color on on the factor demand. Heavy commercial vehicle and construction equipment. Uh, the strategy customer or group customer or top of the pyramid customer or large fleet operator customers are always being funded by banks only. We were always financing the retail customer, and that's the reason if you see that heavy commercial vehicle and construction equipment are market share has been small as compared to the light commercial vehicle and used. So when the strategy customer or large fleet operator purchases the vehicle, it is being funded by the banks only. And at this juncture, the majority of the sale which is happening is because of the replacement demand coming out from the strategy customer or large fleet operator. So the banks are operating. But after some time, when the freight availability and uh, you know uh, capacity utilization of the retail customer improves. Then the retail customer also will come, which will further drive the growth because initial drive of the uh, you know commercial vehicle or construction equipment growth comes from the large fleet operator, followed by the you know retail customer, and that point in time we also get into that. Having said that, we we also see that our market share has gone up in heavy commercial vehicle and construction equipment because our customer segment also uh, in you know, some parts of the country started actually participating in purchase. That is from FCV and construction equipment. Uh, in the case of used vehicle, the used vehicle business is actually growing much faster because even the strategy customer or large fleet operator who are actually buying the vehicle are not adding the fleet but replacing the fleet. So they 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 are continuously selling their existing uh, vehicle and it is going to be retail customer and retail customers are buying and that's the reason retail customers are not buying the new vehicle. So till such time you will see that. You know, used business is going to grow, and we are expecting that this year used business will continue to grow. Now, coming to the tractor, tractor uh, monsoon has been good, and uh, as overall average, uh, it is higher than the 100 percent. But uh, uh, Bengal, Jharkhand, uh, Bihar, Odisha, uh, Bihar, and Uttar Pradesh are not uh, having that kind of monsoon. It is slightly deficit, so we need to wait for that because these are the larger market for the tractor. Once that uh, uh, monsoon is actually completed by say August, uh, September end, we will be in position to say that how much uh, you know demand strongness is there. However, as of now, uh, last quarter we saw 16% growth and is driven by Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and some of the market where monsoon has been very good. We are hoping that you know the rest of the four states where tractor sales have been good in the past, or uh, they are actually producing more kharif. Uh, we'll also will have a better monsoon, and that will further grow. Uh, we will drive the tractor growth in this month, in this uh, next year. Thanks for this. This is good. Uh, this is useful. So my last question is for uh, Arun sir. Uh, sir, I mean, if I kind of uh, look at the runoff that we have seen in the loan book, uh, you have suggested uh, kind of in the last quarter that it will be new elevated for the next two quarters, which is predominantly. Uh, H1 of of this fiscal year, and then it should revert back to the normalized levels. So, how should we kind of? And we have already seen that normalize or kind of come down in this quarter. So, how should we kind of think about it? I mean, that's how I mean it will progress. That it will remain slightly elevated for the second quarter, and then start normalizing in the second half of this fiscal year. And so, secondly, I mean, uh, kind of if I look at the write-offs, uh, what was the quantum of write-offs and the and the recalculate write-offs? Uh, uh, I mean, it looks like it was slightly elevated, uh, nothing alarming. Slightly elevated compared to, uh, let's say, the pre-COVID levels. So, how should we kind of uh, think about it? those other two questions? Yeah, the the <clears throat> runoff will be there for one quarter uh, for vehicle finance, and it will be actually uh, not even visible in the lab later because they are. <clears throat> the write-offs uh, has been higher both in Q4, but in Q1 it has not been there for vehicle finance other than the repo sale related. So those are normal 
you know quarter on quarter levels uh, the 1.2% uh, uh, on the, on the credit cost uh, we will we are we are conservatively saying that that levels will be maintained over the quarters because we will see that in q2 continuing but q3 q4 should be better Got it. Got it. You are your tier one is sixteen percent now, and the kind of uh, growth that we are seeing now, uh, while you always have that room of raising tier two capital, I mean, any thoughts of uh, a primary equity rate over the next twelve to eighteen months? No, we uh, we are very clearly articulated that unless the tier one goes down below thirteen percent, we will not be seeking capital. I think we stick to that stand. Great, sir. Thank you so much, and wish you and your team the very best. thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question we would request you to rejoin the queue next question is from the line of bharat cha from ask investment manager limited please go ahead sir yeah hi uh, uh given the kind of uh, new uh, lines of the business that we are attempting to build up in given our traditional strength areas uh what kind of a cycle sustainable roi pretex roi we we see it is a range or uh, which is part of our business model yeah i think we should uh, we should uh, be there in the 3 and up to 4% level uh, we we commit to, to that and we stay committed there but uh, there is scope to improve but right now we do not want to take uh, conservatively any call on that but we only have to take 3 and up to 4% range range up to i'm talking pre tax rota yes yeah yeah pre tax i'm talking of and uh, what kind of uh, uh, given the kind of uh, potential growth uh, that we see in uh, our lines of activity plus the new lines what kind of uh, uh, leveraging compared to our network uh, we think uh, will be a point for uh, capital raise i mean typically what will be sustainable uh level of leveraging will uh, prefer to keep before we uh, go into a new capital raise we we are in the six times uh, debt equity levels uh, we will continue to be around the six to seven times level uh, because that would give that would be the number actually we could uh, the 13% or the sub 13% level will take us to eight times but we don't intend to go there so we we can comfortably be in the 6 to 7 times uh, you know band uh, uh, that that was that's the way we are wanting to look at more importantly the new businesses churn more because they are shorter tenure so i i don't see the dead equity will be significantly impacted because of scaling up the new businesses so one to see net worth in about 6 rupee borrowing so 7 rupee of total capital up to 7 right yeah. now uh, it, uh, now it is around 5.9 times yeah yeah so up to 7 which means 8 rupees sir okay uh, so potentially up to 8 rupee of total capital and 3 and up to 4% range of roe pretex which means about close to 2.7 to 3% percent post tax uh, return and therefore about uh, sustainable roe of about 20% yeah yeah correct correct okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of siraj from laban capital please go ahead uh, hello sir uh, my question was around the gnp and the gst numbers which were reported so when the new norms come in from 1st of october our gnp will be the gst number right essentially the reporting right now is only for uh, to report the numbers they won't be applicable will they 
we have given you both the numbers. Uh, the, you know, the stage three numbers right now, which is shown, will be the pre or the current prevailing levels of N uh, net NP and the gross NP as per IRAC norms. The uh, new norms, uh, we, if it comes through and we have put through the numbers, we will be at a net NPA of 4.43 percent, and uh, at, the, at the overall level, uh, we will be at 6.31 percent on the gross NPA uh, as we close to June. The details are available in page 26 of the investor presentation. Kindly run through. Just to clarify, this is my question. What actually so you reported the new under new norms, the NPA will be 6.3 percent. But mm -hmm. as on 1st of October, when the new norms actually kick in, so the uh, effect will start coming in post that, right? So the GST should be your uh, uh, gross NPA numbers as on that date. I mean, so if they were to come in from today, your GNP as on date will uh, be... So this is a debatable point. We we are, see the gross NPA as per RBI is different from the stage 3 numbers, which is as per India. That is why we are giving it as stage 2B and stage 1B, if you see. Those two, if you add, they are really under in the area two stage 2 level of uh, asset because they are less than 90 days. 90 days and above is shown as stage 3. Less than 90 days and, you know, more than 30 days is shown as stage 2. And less than 30 days is shown as stage 1. So those others which have attached to NPA and are in these brackets will be shown in the stage 2B and stage 1B respectively. And they will be, if you add all three, you will get the net NPA as per RBI. We intend to present it as such unless the regulator, you know, wants us to group everything under stage 3. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. That was a question. Thank you. Next question is on the line of Rikin Ketan Shah from Credit Susi. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I had a couple of questions. Uh, first one was on the asset yields in the vehicle finance business. If I look at the presentation, uh, it seems to have come off by 50 basis points sequentially. Uh, so uh, any, any trend or color there or one-offs included there? That's first one. Second one, uh, the employee headcount. Uh, is up sharply, right? So in last one year, we would have added around 8,000. Uh, but uh, I understand that uh, that could be a mix of on and off payroll. So any split between that? And uh, did I just uh, a clarificatory question relating to the restructure? Did I hear correctly that the book is currently around 3,400 crores now? And one last question is for Kundu, sir. Uh, on the vehicle finance business side, um, while I understand the disbursements are strong, but uh, the outlook uh, seems to be a bit more cautious uh, pertaining to uh, you know, uh, uh, lower freight availability, uh, uneven rainfall, et cetera. So are we expecting slowdown in the disbursements in the quarters ahead? That's all. So I will just start from the vehicle finance. Uh, in the vehicle finance, the industry has shown 115% uh, growth from the commercial vehicle and passenger vehicle did 41% growth. And so did the other product like two wheeler 54% and three wheeler 224%, tractor 16% and construction equipment 61%. So if the industry is growing in this uh, this pace for this financial year, we might touch the previous peak in terms of commercial vehicle and passenger vehicle and maybe in two wheelers. So subject to that, we will definitely grow at the rate of 35%. If industry is growing at the rate of 35%, we have an opportunity to grow slightly higher than that because there will be a value growth in terms of inflation and cost of the vehicle. And also a little bit market share growth will be there. So this is what is the industry. And uh, now we have given you, you the sector uh, outlook where we have given product by product, you know, what is expected in terms of good and bad. Uh, in terms of tractor, suppose I'm just giving you the example, you can go through the total outlook of Chola um, given in the presentation. So in a, overall, uh, monsoon has been very good. Actually, it is higher than the 100% last year. And then, but there are four states which is uh, which is actually selling more tractor is now going through the deficit of monsoon. So unless that gets corrected in next two to three month time, we cannot say that for full year tractor sales will be very good. Secondly, if the crude oil prices are at this level and it doesn't go up and it goes down, then obviously the growth of the commercial vehicle projected will be achieved. It might go up further. 
similarly, you know, the consumption increases, rural demand actually improved because of the better mansion, better, better agricultural growth. Then again, it will further improve the sale of two-wheeler, three-wheeler, you know, you know, even cars and MEV in the rural market. However, you know, as of now, whatever industry is showing up, we, we, we can safely say that the industry is going to grow in this year in terms of uh, number, 35% over last year, and we'll be doing better than that. But we need to also keep those uh, thing in the mind that which can actually, you know, you know, uh, create problem for us. Uh, that's the reason we are given the mixed type of, you know, outlook. That is from the vehicle finance side. And uh, uh, again, can you repeat? Uh, you asked for the sure. right. no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. so much. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Magesh, comment on two questions. You are trying to beat it by cramping four questions into one one attempt. I think that loses the whole. The no purpose of this uh, is, uh, advice on, on question. Three, one is the straightforward answer. 3524 is the right question. Number. 3524. Yeah, 3524. Yeah, okay. And what is the last one? So, one was on the employee headcount addition. So, just wanted to get a flavor on uh, uh, the increase between the off payroll and on payroll and what could be the salary differential between them. The salary differentials and all we cannot get into now. Okay, the headcount details we are given in the investor presentation. But that is mainly because yeah, of that's because of new business. New business and housing finance is also expanding out of south, so they are also recruiting. Yeah, got it. And on the anything on asset yield, sir, uh, in the vehicle book, it come off. It came off by fifty basis points. It will go up now. Slowly, slowly. Marginal book yield, no marginal book. Is growing. Got it. So okay. There is a lag of six months. So marginal book we started doing, it. and there is a difference in the mix. Like you know, at this juncture when all the new vehicles are getting sold more and more because they that is you know that is the industry sale. We have to participate in that as well. So overall yield is depending on one is the mix and second is the overall yield is also depending on the time when we take it to increase it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Subramaniam Iyer from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, what is your observation on loss given default vis-a-vis uh, -vis the 40% stage 3 coverage you have, uh, considering that most vehicle financiers seem to be taking accelerated write-offs and there might be a large pool of repossessed vehicles uh, for disposal in the market? Uh, that's my qu first question. The the second one is uh, how much room do you have in your ALM in terms of moving the mix to CP uh, to limit the rise in your portfolio cost of funds in the near term? And at a product level, how much margin compression do you expect through the cycle or can you pass on the entire cost of funds increase to customers? <laughs> the last given default in the case of repo vehicles is in the range of around 32%. So, uh, sorry, the loss, the incurred loss in the case of uh, zero vehicles uh, is around 32%. So, our provision coverage is significantly uh, higher and gives us enough headroom to cover any volatility there. Uh, the second thing is on uh, sorry, uh, on the uh, CP headroom. CP headroom, we, we can go up to 15% of the borrowing book. We are right now at around 4%. Uh, uh, sorry, 4%. I think it's 7%, yeah. I'm sorry, sorry, 4% was the last quarter. Yeah, 7%. So we have another 78% uh, that we can go, but we may not go all the way up, but we'll be in the range of around 10 to 12%. And at a product level, do you think you can hold the, uh, uh, I mean, ma your margins uh, by passing on entirely to the customers? Lab and yeah. yeah. What is lab and uh, housing finance is a floating rate, which we are doing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what. So, so basically, like, you know, vehicle is a fixed book, but then the other two books is where we basically pass. Sure. Through through the cycle, uh, uh, would you be able to pass? Vehicle finance product level uh, marginal rate only will go up. As and when we do business, that will go up. But in the vehicle finance, main important goal plays by the product mix. So how much we do you know, the high yield business versus low yield business is important for arriving at a overall yield. And we are uh, changing the product mix towards the 
child go to continue school. So that will first increase the yield in next six to nine months time because there is a lag uh, between marginal book yield and the overall book yield. Housing finance and uh, affordable housing and the last is the instant in case where we increase the rate as and when the prices of the cost of fund goes up. Uh, thank you and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is on the line of Nidesh Jain from Investec. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. The, uh, on the new businesses, uh, uh, what sort of specifically in consumer and SME, uh, in consumer, what percent, percentage of uh, uh, origination that we are able to do to our own uh, uh, branches, our own origination in there? And in SME, how much of disbursement are we able to do outside of the Murugupa group? Consumer business uh, or SME business, all we are doing it from the branches only. And uh, with respect to the Murugappa group versus uh, open market group, book, only supply chain finance, 60% of supply chain finance is actually, uh, you know, related to Murugappa group. They are yeah, open market. In SME, we have three, three products. Supply chain finance, term loan, and equipment finance. So supply chain finance is you know, 30 percent of the overall book, and out of 30 percent, 50 percent goes out of Purvapa. That's the number. Sure. So, uh, in consumer and uh, and uh, uh, consumer loans, 100 percent of uh, origination through is uh, through our own branches now. Is, is that correct? All all our CSCL existing infrastructure of vehicle finance. Where in 126 branches we have opened up, those from 127 branches, from there they are almost covering standard uh, uh, towns of the vehicle finance. So, mm -hmm. so you can say that 50% of the branches of vehicle finance being now covered by CCL from 127 hubs. And uh, they have three models. One is the DSA model, GST model, and then the partnership model. All three models, they are utilizing it to acquire the business. Yeah, so if, if you can share what, what percentage of business coming from partnership model that would be helpful. In the CSCL. One third of the things are coming from partnership. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's it from us. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ketav Shah from Anandrati. Please go ahead, sir. Good morning. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, sir, if you can explain uh, what are the number of new customers that have got originated in the new model un under the new business? Yeah. So almost uh, hundred thousand, uh, hundred thousand, hundred thousand vehicles. Uh, okay, um, and um, in the first one point six lakhs customers from one business. From one business. And yeah, so basically, let's just say kind of, let's say about two lakhs across all the businesses. And these are the new. Yeah. I new, mean, new non customers. non vehicle or non uh, lab customers. Yeah. These are customers that don't have, we don't have any other loan. Okay, okay. Versus what would that run rate be, say, last year? Just an offhand number. Last year, no, it was 60,000. Vehicle finance only. Other new businesses were not, not there till yeah. quarter quarter. And this year, how many is there? How many is there? How many The quarter. Yeah. So, so this 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 quarter had about 1.8 lakhs from vehicle finance and 1.8 lakhs or about 2 lakhs from all the other businesses. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, so, second question was related to your um, partnership arrangements. Um, so, the customer ownership is with the partners or with uh, Chola? Just trying to understand the model here. Chola. Okay, okay. I think those were the those were the two questions. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is on the line of Shweta Daptardar from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. My first question is for Sundi, sir. Good morning, sir. Um, so as far as the vehicle finance disbursement mix is concerned, uh, why has the used vehicle financing 
loans uh, quarter on quarter decline i mean is it the q1 phenomenon or categorically we have chosen to sort of take a cautious step if it's the latter then why so and my second question is on the lap front so what is the normalized uh, uh, loan loss provision we are looking at because that's been quite erratic for a while and therefore that's also weighing on the uh, overall not only the overall uh, profitability but what what is the, then the ideal uh, pbtr we are looking at yeah thanks so that for what, what what was the first question what is the mix you are talking about used uh yeah so uh, why has been the decline in used vehicle financing disbursements quarter on quarter as against the industry queues which have been pretty buoyant oh yeah, we, uh, like you see that our uh, product mix in terms of portfolio page number uh, given it in the page number 40 41 40 for 40 is the portfolio right hand side is the product uh, portfolio and left hand side is the right so use vehicle is the product uh, uh, portfolio in terms of our asset under management is 27% as against that we have done 29% so our disbursement is higher than the mix of the uh, you know current mix so disbursements are higher than that if you see the tractor is 10% in terms of our portfolio but in terms of disbursement is 8% so that we can say that tractor we are little cautious as again the portfolio mix in terms of disbursement but in terms of used business we are higher than the portfolio in terms of disbursement that shows that we are quite aggressive in terms of used okay so maybe q4 was uh, uh, always has been a stronger one so maybe that base was pretty high yeah you are right in the in the q q4 to q1 you can say that there has been drop in your used business the, but uh, you know that is because of the mix of, uh, in this uh, first quarter if you see that new vehicle sales have picked up significantly and this has been a first time in april uh, april, april may june it has been such a best quarter for the new vehicle sale so when you participate in new vehicle sale your overall disbursement mix is actually gets skewed towards the new one that is the difference nothing else otherwise if you see our uh, portfolio versus our uh, disbursement our disbursements are higher than the portfolio sure and just one question there related uh, are we number 2 in terms of market share on the used side am i getting it right yeah perfect so my next question is on the lap front yeah loan against property what was the question it was on what is a normalized loan loss provision so yeah Yeah. So, uh, the last two years, if you look at it in the uh, investor presentation, it's showing about 0.7 or 1 point, considering the COVID situation. But at a normalized situation, it could be about 0.4 to 0.5, uh, you know, on a portfolio level. So, you have any targets in mind for PBT Rota uh, for lakh? Rota. Uh, so. Uh, Yeah, it is. You know, we are we are well. We are expecting today to deliver all at least three point five percent. So three three point five is the expected rota. Currently for the current quarter we are at four point seven. Yeah, that is uh, because, because, of, because, 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 because of the yeah, yeah. on a on a steady state we are expecting at a three point five percent. Three point five to four percent. Perfect, sir. Thank you so much and best luck for future endeavors. Thank you. Next question is on the line of Param Subramanian from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I wanted to ask firstly on the restructured book. Um, so you've classified. I think it's largely in stage two, and I think it's largely repaying. You know, based on uh, the commentary that you've po- provided. So how long will we continue classifying this in stage two? And uh, do we uh, plan to you know classify this back to stage one and reverse the eleven percent sort of provision cover that you have here? that question one question two is again on the vehicle finance uh, yield decline uh, quarter on quarter could you uh, you know uh, explain again what was the reason um, for the vehicle finance yield decline um, you know i didn't get the part on the marginal book are you saying the marginal book yield is lower than the existing book yield so i just wanted to understand that and thirdly i also wanted to understand on the credit cost uh, you know what was the reason for the spike in the quarter And if you could quantify the write-offs in the quarter, yeah, those are my questions. 
we started uh, we started moving those restructured books which uh, which have complete which have uh, repaid more than 30% of the uh, original costs so during the quarter we have uh, moved around uh, 50 crores of the restructured book to stage 1 because we completed uh, repaying more than 30% of the costs outstanding on the date of restructure uh, we will do that uh, every quarter as they repay the uh, uh, repay more than 30% levels, which is what is given by RBI as a guidance. The rest of the book is shown in stage 2, and some add moved into stage 3, so this is the bombing. And of course, a lot of uh, also around 1,500 outgrows have got repaid or, uh, you know, settled out. Python. The spike in credit cost this time is also because for the first time we have also started providing on the macro factors. So far during the COVID period, when we started, uh, you know, uh, measuring the macro impact, the macro impact had been negative. That is, it was resulting in a re reversal of provision, though we did not take reversals and kept them, we did not provide anything additional. This quarter, what has happened is that because the interest cost hikes and then there was uncertainties, the macro model threw up a provisioning requirement of around 50 crores, uh, which we have provided additionally as part of the ACL, and that's the reason you see the spike happening. As far as the book yield is concerned of vehicle finance, before it was 13.99 and Q1 it is 13.91. It is almost the same level. Before that, in Q3, it was 14.26. So from Q3, on, from Q4 onwards, we started seeing that the new vehicle sales have picked up. So when new vehicle sales pick, picked up, it does over that. It actually reduces slightly price. Otherwise, it is almost the same level. It is not uh, down. Kundu, sir, if I could just interject, sir. Um, so the income yield you provided in vehicle finance in this slide, so it is down 50 basis points QOQ. Um, so that's the number I'm looking at, um, so the income yield that you provided in the slide on vehicle finance. Uh, uh, slide you're saying, referring to? So 15.4 has gone to uh, gone to 14.9 uh, on vehicle finance uh, income yield. So that is uh, that is quarter on quarter versus uh, the, the, the not q4 versus q q1 you are talking i think the yes. comparison is q1 versus q1 the mix was completely different and that was a very small book at that time. that was a covid book right yeah. that was uh, influenced by the large quantum of covid uh, tractors in the book at that point in time so it will keep changing based on the mix of the book of course, there have also been some small reductions in the yield, but now we will be pushing up the marginal yield as we see the interest rates are coming up. In a downturn, when interest rates are dropping, you will see that progressively the book will show the impact over the next few quarters of the drop because the book has to change its uh, Okay, got it. So just one last part on the macro provisioning. Is is this something that will uh, recur quarter on quarter is, or is this uh, you're looking at more as a one-off for this quarter? That was my last question. Uh, thank you and all the best. No, the macro, there is a model we have built uh, factoring in, you know, the various uh, macro measures like you know, uh, GN, uh, uh, GDP and, you know, consumption and uh, industrial growth, etc. And the influence on each of the portfolios that they have. Basis that the model throws up and it takes into consideration the impact of the such change over another one quarter or two quarter or three quarter down the road. And that is that's how the model throws out what is the macro provision required for each of the sub segments. And that's how we measure it. And when it comes that it can there will be reversals, we don't consider reversals, but when it throws up that there is a requirement, we provide for it. So we will continue using this model as we go back because it's an integral part of the India's mo model of uh, provisioning. Yeah, so, and so I, I think if you take from that, it's not the intent to provide every quarter, but it depends on what the actual kind of variables indicate for the future outlook. Got it, sir. Thank you, team. Thank you so much.
you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Jigmesh Shell from Imprint Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Uh, so, congrats on a good set of numbers. Just uh, one data point. Uh, uh, sorry, I missed out. Uh, I joined a little late, but uh, are you giving uh, Stipid's recovery and write-off number uh, for the quarter and for the last quarter? Uh, are you total or the business-wise? Whatever is available. Okay. We couldn't hear your question clearly. No. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Can I get the slippage recovery and write-off number for the quarter on and for the last quarter if it is available or you are giving it? Okay, yeah, we can tell you now. Uh, normally we don't give it if it is around uh, 148 uh, crores this quarter. And last quarter was around 200 crores. This is net, right? Sorry? This is net slippage you are saying or this is... Uh, 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 Hello? Yeah, this is slippage number you're saying, right? Right off. Right off, okay, okay, okay. Can yeah, I get a slippage? Slippage, I see there are only two components. One is right off, the other one is the provision, accretion, or, you know, reduction. It, that moves with the model and the MPA number. Understood. So it Understood. is more, the provision is more, and they have moved on provision. But that's more a notional number. Right off is the crystallized loss pattern. Understood. Understood. And uh, second question had been uh, you acquired PaceWiff uh, last year. So, how that particular business is, uh, 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 you know, how is accommodative to us and how we are basically using it up? If you can give some color on it, that this uh, fintech part, how it is helping us out or what we are doing with this business, if you can give some color on it, if possible, that would be really uh, useful. Thanks, thanks for this. I think broadly it's still early days for PaceWare. The okay. intent, and you know, that still uh, continues to be our focus, is that they deal with a particular profile of SME customer. Mm. And, uh, you know, they have a, a fairly large distribution capability into those customers using both a combination of a, of a, you know, a direct sales model and a partnership model. Uh, in some of the partnerships, uh, you know, we do have access to that customer base, and some we don't. Uh, and the intent is to basically, once we get some history with those customers, to start a lending book on top of that. Uh, okay. So, like, like we said, this will take some a little more time because we need to first develop the capability to have enough data on those customers that we can start a lending book. And once we have that, then, you know, the intent is to basically see how a combination of a payments product and a lending product can be uh, driven to expand up our penetration in the SME segment. Understood. If I can squeeze in just one more thing. Uh, so this customers will be more catered through your new business line, right, rather than a vehicle and housing and lab. Uh, it, it, this is more towards the new business lines that you will be getting to this customer. Is is that understanding correct? Absolutely, that is correct, and that's what we've articulated as well. That the intent is to really focus on how we expand both the consumer and SME ecosystems, which is why you can see the partnership model that we have talked about for both uh, you know our consumer and small enterprise loans business. And in, in, in some cases, a structure like this is what we're going to focus on to improve our penetration in those segments. So considering the kind of growth we are seeing in new business, gradually the overall portion would be uh, tilting towards new business as well. So the mix would gradually will be changing uh, over the over, over next two or three years. Uh, this, this would be a fair assumption to make, right? So right now, the dominance which is there in vehicle will gradually will, will be more granular in nature for Chola as a whole. Uh, I don't think the mix shift will be so different in two to three years, but the intent is to move it over a period of time. So we'd like to take take a longer term horizon. On that. Understood. Understood. Thanks. Thanks for this, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participants. 
Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Next question is from the line of Panti Chavla from IDBA. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, firstly, on the, if you can share your uh, thought process on the AEM growth guidance for yes. this year. Yes, uh, of it. Last year. Is it audible, sir? You speak a bit louder. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you show, uh, throw the guidance on the AEM growth part? Because last year there was a pressure on the prepayment, repayment. This this year should should be the normalization for that year and disbursement growth are picking up. So if you can share your thought process on that. Secondly, sorry for the repetition. I missed the write-off number. If you can repeat that number for me. If industry, like we mentioned that in vehicle finance, if industry deliver 35% growth over the last year, obviously vehicle finance will grow much better than that. And in that case, we will get opportunity to grow more than 20% because 70% growth, 70% book is vehicle finance. In any case, LAP and uh, housing finance, they are growing over 20% as of now. So only thing is at the moment vehicle finance start growing at the rate of 20%, it will actually improve the overall growth. We have done well in the Q1 if you have seen that as compared to the last quarter. So I am expecting that the industry will support this year and we'll come out of the higher run down obviously in the second quarter. So both put together we likely to go grow, you know, safely twenty percent. And like we said, there's one more quarter of runoff to be had. Yeah. So only in the second half only we'll start seeing significant movement. And sir, write off number if you can repeat for me. In one more year, two hundred crore Q4. Forty-eight is in Q1. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, sir. And all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Alpesh from. IFL Securities, please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Just two questions. So what's the average duration of this uh, new portfolio that uh, we, are, we are adding into our balance sheet? Uh, that's first. Secondly, uh, in the home loan business, I see the new the new purchases portfolio being stable between 1300 and 1400 crores in the last few quarters. So, uh, and the self construction is increasing. So, any any specific reason reason on that? And and lastly, the one more question is. Uh, we can understand the home loan question. I'm sorry, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a volume problem at our end, but you might have to just speak up a bit for the home loan question. Okay, sure. So the home home loan portfolio mix, when I see the share of the self construction is over the last seven eight quarters is increasing, whereas the the uh, the new purchases share is coming down. And in the absolute value, that number remains between 1300 1400 crores for the last few quarters. So any any specific shift in the business focus there. And lastly, I just wanted to check uh, uh, now with all this moratorium and uh, etc. being over, can we see the repayment and the prepayment rates across uh, the, across businesses being pre-COVID levels in interest of FI23 now? Housing, affordable housing self construction has been the focus area and we have uh, further actually improved that. And in, in in uh, housing, affordable housing, we were mainly working in the south zone and we started in the rest of the country. In the rest of the country, mix was slightly lower, which we have now changed it to, to a self construction. That is what the uh, affordable housing is. Small enterprises. And sir, so what would be the average ticket size for that self construction uh, portfolio for us? 15 lakhs. 15 lakhs. 14, 14. 14 lakhs. Oh, one, one, four. four. Okay, okay, great. Okay. In consumer and small enterprises, we have uh, we mentioned that there are three verticals, there are three uh, three channels. One is partnership channel and DSA, DSA and GDC channel. In the and partnership, we are doing 33 percent. Whatever we do in the partnership, mainly is a consumer loan or personal loan, which is a short term uh, and a small ticket size, which is uh, hardly three to six months, uh, ten hours. But in the case of balance 60 percent, which is a traditional loan, which goes up to five years. So we have a both the products in the consumer side. 
So 33% is a small ticket, a small ten, and balance 66% is a normal ticket size, and uh, up to three years average. Three to four, three years is average. Okay, and the last question related to that uh, prepayment, repayment rate. Are we formally back to the pre-COVID levels, and the, during the COVID, whatever the disruptions related to the uh, changes into the payment schedule, are been are those been addressed now completely? Yes, that is you know the collection is been back in the we have been doing 114 percent of the billing collection and is going on very well. That's the reason you see that our case to case is coming down. We further improve actually. In, in first and uh, quarter one and quarter two are always lean collection. Collection picks up from after the festival. In spite of that, this year we have done collection in the June quarter and uh, expecting uh, that you know September quarter also will be good. Uh, this collection will happen in December and uh, you know March quarter. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is on the line of Mahesh. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Um, just two questions on my side. One is we see some pretty healthy new vehicle sales of commercial vehicles in the market, and yet uh, at a system at the industry level, we still see overdue still not reach pre-COVID. Um, if you could just kind of tell us some qualitative answers as to what could what could explain this that lenders are taking some time out to clear out the inventory of overdue loans in the market. Talking about the new vehicle sales picked up, but the overdues of the uh, customer who have not come down. That's what you're saying. Mm. Yeah, that yes. is obvious. You have actually missed out the, during the COVID period, gone into six or nine bucket. They are continuously paying one or two EM. That is, uh, it will take at least six to nine more months to come back to the normal level. Uh, however, the new requirement from the uh, market, uh, mainly driven by the large fleet operator from the uh, from the heavy commercial vehicle and uh, construction equipment point of view has gone up and that's the reason they are driving the number. But the, uh, the this particular drive of uh, the growth will be will, will be will cannot be sustained unless the retail customers start coming up. So we are expecting that the retail customer who have uh, uh, you know who only purchase the used vehicle will start coming back to the market after the second half, maybe after the festival, subject to the monsoon has been good and uh, you know agriculture growth is there supported by GDP growth. So the current uh, number is driven by the large fleet operator in commercial vehicle and and subsequently it will be driven by the retail customer. Perfect. And one last question from my side. And there is a reasonably stark difference between the way market is seeing the macro backdrop for next year. Uh, yet lenders are reasonably optimistic of the situation on the ground. Um, how would you reconcile the two when you are building your business for this year and how can the portfolio be protected for next year in case there is a slowdown out there? Thanks, and that will be all. Yeah, I think it's very difficult to, I mean, to actually say what is going to happen, right? In terms of, I think too many people are trying to predict and we don't know how to predict. So we are basically not trying to formulate this view. And, you know, so that's why... Even Ravi said, hey, listen, if the market grows at X, this is what we will end up growing at, which will be slightly more than the market. But what's actually going to happen, I don't think anybody can stay at the, say at this stage. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, like, it, it looks like basically kind of, you know, everybody who looks too much at the West has got kind of this view that recession is coming around. But it also looks like, you know, it won't be as pronounced in India as it is kind of globally. And that might be causing some of the bullishness. But that's not how we are driving internal behavior. It's kind of actually driven by what we are seeing on the ground. And that's what's kind of driving most of what, what's happening for us. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ranju, you can, you can close the call from now. Thank you. Due to time constraints, we have reached the end of question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah, no, no, nothing specific from our side. You know, thanks a lot for, for joining, and we look forward to seeing you next quarter. Yeah, thank thanks you. a lot. On behalf of Kotak Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now